Okay, whenever you're ready. Imagine for a moment that you're babysitting. When the baby's hungry, instead of giving the baby milk in the child's bottle, you're going to give the baby hot sauce. When the baby starts crying, instead of holding and comforting the child, you're just going to ignore them. And finally, instead of putting the child in a safe playpen with its toys, you're going to let the child crawl around the floor unsupervised and risk the child falling down the stairs. This is wrong, and most people know it's irresponsible and would never treat a child this way. However, some people treat animals this way, with the same irresponsibility, and in turn, this can affect everyone. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about dog fighting. I'm able to speak to you about this topic because I've done research, I've read many articles, and I've seen video footage of actual dog fights. I also want to stress the importance of this topic and how it can affect our community. I will give you a brief overview of the history behind dog fighting, the way it's being done, and the results of the crime. AnimalLaw.com explains that dog fighting started in the Roman Empire and continued into the 12th century in medieval England. The Humane Act of 1835, which protects animals against cruelty, slowed the, the use of dog fighting until the development of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. This dog had the strength of the bull and the quick and viciousness of the terrier made the perfect fighting dog. Fighting came to America, and the dog, American Sapphire Chair Tire, also known as the Pitbull, was born. The fights worked the same way as they did about 60 years ago. The dogs weigh in at once two pounds of each other, they are put into a ring, and they fight until one dog either gives up or dies, and the fights, the fights can last up into six hours. The winner is patched up and starts training for the next fight. The loser, if he doesn't die on his own from deep lacerations or collapsed lungs, is killed by his owner because he lost the fight and doesn't deserve to live. The owners kill the dogs by electrocuting them, drowning them, bashing their heads on the ground, hanging or simply shooting the dog. Imagine how anybody could treat an animal this way. On an HBO special, The Underground World of Dog Fighting, a man who wishes to remain anonymous says it's just like any other Sunday football game. It's just like any other sport. The dogs are not fed. They are given steroids. They are not allowed to have any human contact. They are isolated outside. They are put on treadmills with dead animals hanging in front of them to entice their one to bite. And they hang by their mouths from ropes called spring pools to strengthen their jaws. Dog men, who are the ones that train the dogs, steal pets from the neighbors' lawns and break their legs and tie their mouths shut so they have no way to escape and then they feed them to their dogs. A man said it's just like any other Sunday football game. I don't know about you, but the Sunday games I watch don't involve this sort of training, and the players aren't killed if they lost. And if it's just like any other sport, then why is it illegal in 50 states and considered a felony in 48? Michael Vick, as most of you said you know, was a former quarterback for Atlanta Falcons. Over the summer, he and three other men were indicted on charges of competitive dog fighting and conducting adventure across state lines. The Washington Post says that Michael Vick had had dog fighting operations in Virginia and was well involved with them by attending, hosting, and paying off debts and executing approximately eight of these dogs. Michael Vick has been involved with dog fighting for, since 2001, but has not been arrested because there wasn't enough evidence. John Goodwin, an expert on dog fighting from the Humane Society and whose name appears in many articles, that there has been cases in Virginia where there have been convictions and people sent to prison with far less evidence. They can prove beyond a shadow of doubt that dog fighting took place on Michael Vick's property. The ASACP took 49 dogs from Michael Vick's home, and 48 of them were able to be rehabilitated and put up for adoption. Only one had to be put to sleep because he was too vicious. If convicted, he could face up to six years in prison, over $350,000 in fines, and could face the return or not to return to the NFL. His court date is set on November 27th. Some of you might agree that this is cruel and inhumane, but wonder does it really affect us? The dogs are bred for many generations to be cruel and vicious. Philadelphia has many cases of dog fighting, and the dogs can be thrown out on the street, run away from the dog fighting facilities, or have puppies with fighting blood in them. If anybody buys one of these puppies, or if they come in contact with one of the fighting dogs, they can become a victim and be attacked or even bitten by one of these dogs. 
A CNN report says that 40,000 people are involved with professional dog fighting. 100,000 people are, are involved with street fighting or non-professional fighting. And not only is this illegal actions, but it's also illegal betting. The business of dog fighting brings in approximately $500 million per year, and people have been known to bet up to $100,000 per fight. Dog fighting also brings drugs and prostitution to the fights. It's easy to see why pit bulls have such a bad rep rep reputation, because the media and the news promotes this. On a CBS story, when the dog fights, it says that there are no good breeds, or there are no bad breeds, and any dog is able to bite. But if they are trained properly, they have the potential to become great dogs. And this was surprising. There was a list of dogs that were most likely to bite. On that list, the names included dash hounds, toy poodles, miniature pinchers, and cocker spaniels. The real pit bull breed, American Staffordshire Terrier, American Pit Bull Terrier, or their Staffordshire Bull Terrier, they are not aggressive by nature. They can be gentle, playful, and loving. In fact, they are great with kids. They are only aggressive because they have been abused and neglected. This morning, I hope I've given you a little insight to the world of dog fighting, from the history to how it's being done to the results of the crime. I hope you understand the severeness of this problem and that it is much more than just harming animals. It's immoral, unacceptable, and it needs to be stopped. Thank you.